So today we're going to finish up some parts of energy. So we talked about energy with ATP, ADP, AMP. Then we talked about photosynthesis. Then we wanted to understand photosynthesis just a little bit better. So I talked about the autotrophs versus the heterotrophs, but as well as the parts of the leaf. So where photosynthesis takes place with a plant. Now we're going to talk about us, cellular respiration. How do we get the energy? How do we breathe? How um, all of this ties in together? So I need you to pause your screen and write down this chemical equation for cellular respiration. Go ahead, pause it now. Okay. So cellular respiration takes place in the mitochondria, right? Because the mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell. Which gives us all of the energy, right? So now we have this chemical formula. And basically it's photosynthesis read backwards. So the first thing that we start off with, we need some carbohydrates, right, in our lives to live. So we have glucose, which is C6H12O6. Remember, now we have to take an oxygen. We cannot live without oxygen. So now we get six molecules of oxygen, which is 6O2. Well, we actually release water when we breathe. Um, and throughout the day, we release a lot of water, even throughout our cells. So we release and produce six molecules of water, which is 6H2O, as well as we breathe out six molecules of carbon dioxide, which is 6CO2. Uh, CO2. Then we also release energy. So remember, this plant's photosynthesis, it reads, they got to take in water carbon dioxide and energy from the sun and it produces us glucose and oxygen, right? So cellular respiration, we take the glucose and the oxygen to make the water and carbon dioxide. So again, it is just a mirror image of photosynthesis. So here is a the equation. So the first one is photosynthesis and then the second one is cellular respiration. As you see, it's the same letters, the same numbers. It's just the order that is different. So what they start with for photosynthesis is what we end with. And what they end with with photosynthesis is what we start with. Okay? So it's basically, again, reversed. And remember, the chloroplast and mitochondria are very similar. So plants use chloroplast. And we use the mitochondria. Now, remember, the chloroplast has fluid called stroma. Well, we have fluid in our mitochondria called matrix. They have stacks of membranes, which is called thycloids or granium. We have folds, which is called cristae. We have a membrane. They have a membrane. So comparing the two, so what is the biggest difference between photosynthesis and cellular respiration? Well, we do know that photosynthesis is for plants and we know cellular respiration is for uh, anything that's pretty much like an animal. They both, as you see here, uh, the function for photo is energy storage. The function for cellular respiration is energy release. Well, chloroplast for photosynthesis, mitochondria for cellular respiration. People always get reactants and products mixed up. Well, reactants is always the left-hand side of the arrow, okay? So reactants, CO2, that is right there, the left-hand side of the arrow, because a product is just being made or created, which will be the right-hand side. Imagine the arrow as an equal sign, okay? So we have a reactant. So remember, the reactants photosynthesis will be the products for cellular respiration. So cellular respiration makes ATP. 
How does it make ATP? Well, we break down the sugars, right? So photosynthesis creates the sugars when we break down the sugars. And remember, ATP is our biggest source of energy. Adenine, adenosine triphosphate. Cellular respiration is aerobic. Aerobic means we need oxygen. Okay, aerobic means we need oxygen. It takes place in the mitochondria. In order for cells to gradually release energy from glucose, it has to go through stages, and there are three stages. So remember, photosynthesis took place with light, dependent and independent reactions um, in order for it to take place properly. We have to go through three things. Our first one is glycolysis. The second one is known as the Krebs cycle. The third is known as the electron transport chain, which is what we call ETC, or the oxidative phosphorylation. I want to just call it ETC. So glycolysis. Glycolysis is the first step. It does not need oxygen. Okay, if it does not mean oxygen, that means anaerobic. So anaerobic. Aerobic means oxygen is needed. Anaerobic means no oxygen is needed. This takes place in the cytoplasm of the cell. Okay, remember that's the jelly-like substance that holds the cell together. Now, it needs two ATP must be added in order for the process to get started. So in order for you to get your car crank, you need what? Gas. So a, this two ATP is like the gas to get it started. Then once it starts, four ATP are made and that gives us two ATP produced, right? So it's gonna use it and it makes two. The next cycle is called the Krebs cycle, also known as the citric acid cycle. Now this one says it requires oxygen. That means it is aerobic. Now the first one occurred inside of the cytoplasm. This occurs in the mitochondria. Along the way, this is where the energy is being formed. Third, we have the electron transport chain. This again requires oxygen, and that again means aerobic. Now, the glycolysis takes place in the cytoplasm. We have the last step, the uh, Krebs cycle takes place in the mitochondria. Now, this one takes place in the inner membrane of the mitochondria, okay? inner membrane. So this right here is very similar to how it goes through the thycloid stacks. Remember how the sun hits it and it, we have the cycle that takes place in the chloroplast for photosynthesis. This is very, very similar. It's the same thing, but now along the way, energy from the electrons causes energy to produce 32 ATPs. Cellular respiration makes up to 36 to 38 from one piece of glucose. That's a lot of energy. So every piece of glucose in a cell can make up to 36 to 38 uh, ATPs, which is a lot of energy per glucose. Now here is the cycle. Um, so again, glycolysis is our first step, right? And Two are consumed, four is made, but only gives us a net profit of two. Citric acid cycle makes two. So you see the whole cycle. The last one is the ETC. But remember, it says 32 to 34, but usually we can do 32 to 38, and we pretty much average 36. Okay? You need to write this down. Okay? Write this down. You need to understand that aerobic has to take place in the presence of oxygen. Now, again, we can take up the 38 ATP is our max per glucose carried out in mitochondria. Now, this is what I want you to really write down is this. You may can't draw the little boy, but I want you to understand the arrow. So the little boy takes an oxygen and glucose and he releases energy, carbon dioxide and water vapor. But what if oxygen isn't available? Hmm, that's a good question. I want you to ponder on that. Ask yourself, what happens if oxygen isn't available? Well, if oxygen is not available, we have anaerobic respiration. Now, we have to have 
anaerobic for us to breathe. But if no oxygen is available, anaerobic takes place, which is called fermentation. Um, this is less efficient, only two ATP. So imagine when we have oxygen, we can get up to 38, um, but this one is two ATP. This occurs in bacteria, yeast, and muscle cells, and it's carried out inside the cytoplasm. Okay, so again, anaerobic bacteria, yeast, and muscle cells, because this doesn't need oxygen, but fermentation takes place, and it takes place with the cytoplasm. So what is fermentation? Well, let's talk about alcohol fermentation. So yes, this will make your beer, your wine, your liquors, your alcohol. This makes the ethanol that's inside the gas occurs in bacteria and yeast, right? So this is called the alcoholic fermentation. Makes alcohol. This is what makes bread, wine, beer, liquor, all those things. And if you actually look at the gas, when you pump gas, it says ethanol levels. Um, lactic acid. Now, lactic acid to me reminds me of the word elastic. I probably spelled this wrong, and I do apologize. Um, elastic. So when I think of elastic, you think of something that can stretch, right? But what does your muscles do? They stretch. So in muscle cells and bacteria, it makes lactic acid. So now we're going to explain why you catch cramps. So lactic acid, again, elastic. So here is the formula. It's going to be a pyruvic acid plus NADH plus uh, is going to equal lactic acid and NADH plus. Um, and that plus sign eventually goes back to catch a hydrogen molecule. So again, two ATP is formed. Now what happens is lactic acid builds up and causes muscle fatigue. So now what happens is you get a strained muscle. Um, the cramps and stuff. Sometimes you overwork your muscle too fast. And what happens is a lactic acid buildup. So it causes the muscle to be strained, causes muscle fatigue. It can cause cramping. Okay? Because again, the lactic acid buildup. So here's our case study muscle cramps. So anaerobic, which means again, no oxygen, can occur during vigorous physical activity. Okay? So what happens is that once your cells lack the su sufficient amount of oxygen, because a lot of times we still got to have aerobic, but once it doesn't, uh, it will switch to lactic acid. But once lactic acid happens, it be can become a buildup, right? So basically it gets clogged up and muscle fatigue leads to cramping. So when you're running and you're running so much, oxygen is not able to go through your muscles. And so what happens is that it begins to build up the lactic inside of it. So the elasticity is like, oh, my goodness, we're going to pull it. So once it pulled, it's like a buildup, and then you catch a cramp. Um, and then once your cramp releases, that's because the oxygen and everything is able to move in there um, in the vigorous activity. Well, how does that happen when you sleep? Well, sometimes when you sleep, your body's relaxed, right? You can just be relaxed. Any sudden movement from that would cause your leg to catch a charley horse or pull because it was a vigorous movement at that time. And that was because, again, you had lactic acid buildup. Alcohol fermentation. So this is yeast and bacteria. Y'all like yogurt, right? Yogurt is nothing but yeast and uh, other things that's in bacteria, pretty much. It's actually good for you. Um, but these produce carbon dioxide and as, as well as it produces um, ethyl alcohol, which is again in your alcoholic drinks. This also yields to ATP. Now, just take the time to identify the difference between aerobic versus anaerobic. So again, aerobic it requires oxygen up to 38 molecules, consists of glycolysis, Krebs cycle, oxidative, which is the ETC, um, waters form, respiratory materials, which is what we need to breathe, happens. Anaerobic does not require oxygen, only gives us two molecules of ATP per glucose. Uh, Membrane consists of glycolysis, but has pyruvates, but again, respiratory materials cannot be oxidized, cannot work, and normally water is not formed. So now, 
what I want you to do is compare and contrast photosynthesis and respiration. So take time to pause the video and look at the difference between photosynthesis and respiration. So I already broke down how photosynthesis takes place in the leaves, how energy is transformed and transferred, as well as how cellular respiration takes place in our body and how we get cramps and how also cellular respiration works with making alcohol and making bread 